Hey, what's up guys? Christian over at Enfig Car Stereo. Uh, today we're going to show you how to install our brand new uh, Enfig VW1 IPDU-AUX. Um, it's an auxiliary and female USB for iPod. We don't, it doesn't come with an iPod cable um, only because, because of the chip that's in the Apple converters. If we would have made it an iPod adapter, the cable every time it broke would have been like a $60 replacement. So uh, we just decided to make it into a USB. It's just easier for everybody. So we're going to show you how to install it, including uh, a couple of shifter USBs. First thing we're going to do is we're going to pop this piece off. Um, usually just grab a PPT. Let's start on this side, you know, and kind of just get in there. Little sideways. Just pull, make sure you pull straight up, okay, because there's clips in here. And if you don't pull straight up, you're going to break them. All right, see? So it's held in by one, two, three, four. Four, five, six. There's two more down here. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. If you and oh, eleven, twelve. I forgot about these. As long as you pull straight up, you're not going to break any. Okay. Now, inside of here is a T20 Torx. All right. So I'm actually going to use my hand screwdriver to get that out, only because it's hard to get in here with a drill gun. You could usually use a screwdriver or something, but I'm trying. Oh, sorry. You know what? The, uh, I just realized I didn't adjust. All right, so what you need to do? I didn't know I adjust something on the camera. That's why it keeps getting dark. All right, so, just unscrew. And you can put your finger behind it like that and pull out the screw, okay? Let me adjust the camera. That was in the wrong setting. Um, actually, that's even too bright. There you go. All right, so now what we're gonna do um, is this piece just comes right out towards you. So it's gonna pull up here, and then that comes out. Now, you're gonna pull it out this way, and you see these little tabs on here, because you don't want them to squeeze out. All right, so, oh, that's weird, that never happens. This literally never, ever happens. So these things are in here to hold it. And they just fell off. So I guess they were bad from the factory. Yeah, you just gotta. I pulled out literally hundreds of these. That's never happened. I'm not even sure how to fix this. I guess you just gotta squeeze these, right? And then just put them on there. You might have to squeeze them with a uh, uh, what you gonna call it? Tweezers or something? Tweezers, pliers. All right, then there's two more T20 Torx here. You see one here and one here. Got lucky today. It was raining really hard all morning. Well, it's like raining and um, all these screws are the same, so you can keep them together. You don't have to worry about keeping them separate. But anyway, it was raining all morning, so the uh, the raining and hailing um, little ice balls. So the uh, video would have been really noisy if it didn't stop. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, let me do a camera adjustment. All right, guys, so next thing about the radio is you're gonna have to just pull this piece up. Um, best way to do that um, is grab the panel tool we were using. Uh, this is a PPT-1. They come in uh, sets of five, uh, or you can buy them by yourself. For this one, you only need one. You can use this one. I usually use a flat one because the flat one has a little better grip. So you pull up. Now make sure, look at my finger. My finger is not on the vent, it's on the frame, okay? If you put it on the vent, you're gonna end up breaking it. All right. Now, when you see over here, there's going to be this little piece of plastic that goes up and down. I don't know if you can see that, but just you gotta go over it to pry out. All right. All right. So that goes up. Now, this has a passenger air light bag. If you want to risk, you can take it out. I usually just go like this and put it off to the side um, because if you unplug it and you turn the car on, um, I think. You might be able to trip it. You'll definitely trip it if you turn the car on. I'm not 100% sure that you will not trip it if you do not turn the car on. All right, then you got two more T20 torches over here. Whoops, I got the wrong bit on here. The T25. Must have been the wrong row. All right, so here you go. One, two. Good thing about this radio is that no one's taken it out before. Um, 
I can tell. Um, I can tell just because it's it's clean. All right, so now what we're gonna do is gonna pull up here a little bit, and you're gonna come in here, like right next to the cap button, and you're gonna pry, uh, pry even out, like the other side, like the top. I mean, um, the problem is that the clips behind these things are crap. Um, they were designed. They weren't designed bad, but once you have to take them out, they break easy. I can usually get away without breaking them, but even I break them once in a blue. All right, so we pry both sides now. Now I'm gonna come in here and pry that out. Pry that out. Okay. So let's see. Voila. All right. Looks like I've only lost. I guess I was wrong. This radar has been out before. All right, so this radar's been out before. Uh, the reason I know that is because there's a clip here that I lost and a clip here that I lost. But then there should also be a clip here to match this one and it's not here, which means that somebody already took this out. So, yeah, because I mean, one, two, three and a half broken clips. I never break that many. So, yeah, someone's been in here before. Uh, like I said, you see the clip here and the clip here. There's not one over here to match the missing one over here. So, like I said, even if you break one or two, that's normal. Um, like I said, I usually don't break any, but whatever this is the video we have. All right, four screws, one, two, three, four. Uh, it's the ones behind them, in front of the metal, not these or these. All right, so I see people telling them uh, that they've taken all the four screws out and it doesn't want to come out. And then what it is, it's not really. You can fix these, by the way. Um, all you really got to do is just put them where they belong and put a little hot glue on them. Not too much, because if you put too much hot glue, it's going to stick out and you'll never get it out. I just want to take them out so I don't forget. Yes. Okay, so now you get that out. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that Toasted there's no CDs water. in here. The now there are CDs. The fire. Or check out our light version, the hook and ladder light for only five forty nine. And at four hundred and fifty calories, it's like it's made for you, Robin. That's so sweet of you. Only five forty nine. Try our That sound like torture music. Same kind of music he's got in here. All right, so put those off to the side. Now what we're gonna do, you don't have to take out the radio um, entirely out of the cart, but it just makes things so a little easier. Okay. Now be very careful when you do what I'm doing right now. The radio's stuck on something, I'm not sure what. Usually isn't stuck, but you gotta be careful with the antenna. All right, not sure what that was stuck on, but the antenna on this, when you get it to this point, put your hand back here and protect it, because if you pull on it too hard, um, you're gonna break it, all right? So there's two different types of pull. This one just squeezes and comes out. Some of the other ones, you have to squeeze, pull out, and then release. Now, if you guys notice, I have my hand behind the radio protecting the dashboard. You gotta be careful with that, cause you know, just... and sometimes they just don't want to come out. So push in. All right, and then the harness is very easy to take out. All you have to do is squeeze. I'm gonna pull on this, give it a little pull. All right, no, there was no pull left on that, so don't do that. All right, so I'm gonna squeeze here. I see how I squeeze it, it'll unlock. All right, once it unlocks, you just pull up and the whole thing just comes right out, okay? So once you release, you see these little side traps? They release on the radio and you're good to go. Mailman's here making noise, so let me pause this, I'll be right back. Okay, all right, now I'm gonna show you this. This connector right here, 
Uh, we're behind the radio because this car doesn't have a CD changer in the glove box. So you're gonna pop this out, there's gonna be three, I mean CD changer in the center console or iPod. There's gonna be three wires here. These are your satellite radio wires, okay? Um, if you wanna keep those, the satellite radio, we offer this sat pass splitter. So what happens is that, well, you just took out the blue, you plug this in, okay? Make sure it's all the way in. These four wires over here will pass through your satellite radio wires, keeping them. And then now this is where you plug in your um, adapter. So in this case, we're using this connector. So this, this connector can sometimes be white depending on what adapter you're installing, but. All right, so that's that. So that's how you keep the satellite radio. All right, splitter goes in. The one with four wires goes into the factory one with three wire, or factory one anyway. And then this goes over here. Even if you have more wires, sometimes you have an iPod in the glove box or center console or something. Okay, so we are going to unplug this and unplug this. So now we're going back to stock. Back to stock meaning Back to stock is not what I meant to say. Now we're gonna go back to your regularly scheduled program. Okay, so in this car, um, this customer's not using satellite radio, which most people don't. So we're not gonna worry about a splitter. So we're gonna just unplug this and plug this in its place. All right, now this is the important part, ladies and gentlemen. This little black wire has to be grounded in order to, um, to connect. All right, without it, it won't work. So if you look at this harness, all right, you see where the blue is? See at the red? So there's a solid brown next to this red with a yellow stripe. That's the factory ground. Now that's the wire we're going to use today, okay? So we, most of you are saying, how do you connect this to this? Well, some of you. There is an, ad there, you can cut it out um, and make it fit. Cut it up. We have a wire that's gonna tap into factory wiring. Um, I find that most of you find using a posi tap uh, easier. So in this case, we're gonna use a posi tap. Posi tap is a pretty easy creation. Um, you unscrew this, okay? See there's a needle there? This is sold separately. I just wanna let you guys know. I get people all the time mad that it wasn't included. They're expensive and not everyone uses them, so we're not just gonna throw them away. All right, so. This goes over here, see? Straddles the wire, all right? And then what you do is you come in here with this little thing and you screw it in. Now you're gonna look through the side, just like I am right now, and make sure, well, let me just put in a little, make sure that the needle is piercing the wire, okay? Because, and make sure it's dead center, because it goes off to the side, it's not gonna make a connection. And that's another problem I have with posi taps, is that, they, um, a lot of times people, it goes right through the side. Um, I love the poly tap because it doesn't damage the wire. So when you're done, you just have a hole through it. So where if you use some of the other methods on the market that make it easy ground, you end up shaving some of the wire off. All right, so now we're gonna take this off, go through here. You don't necessarily have to take it off, but I always do, it just makes life easy. And then you see the wire metal in there, so that's connected to that pin. So now you're connecting a ground through this wire. Oops. All right, so that's in there. So now we're gonna shove the screw in there. And the screw, voila, that's it, done. All right, now that's how you make the connections. Now this is the connection that goes into the adapter. Let me just go get the adapter and we'll be right back. All right guys, now here's the main box for the VWT IPDU. All right, so you're gonna plug it in. Now make sure you plug it in. You see how this is plugged in? Do you see how there's, it's very important. We get returns every once in a while. They say that they stopped working after a while. And what we get them and they're just plugged in like this or like that. If you don't plug it all the way in, it doesn't make a solid connection. All right, so make sure, just give it a little tug. There should be no gap around here. Even like that gap is no good. Just make sure it's all the way in. All right, so that's the connection. On the other side of the box, you have a 3.5, Headphone jack for an auxiliary. And then right here is a nine pin. The nine pin's a multi-use um, 
For this adapter, the IPDU, it comes with a female USB. Um, the, there's also a version for the 30 pin, but it doesn't make any sense because if you use the female USB, um, you can use it with both old and new. Let me go get that up right back. All right, guys. So uh, the IPDU units, uh, we have them for behind the radio, also in the center console. Um, they come with this female USB, okay? So you can plug in your own iPod cable, all right? And they also come with a headphone jack auxiliary cable, okay? So you can do both, all right? Now you can do whatever you want with these. Um, if you watch our other video, you pretty much just run a wire and you snake it down the side. Uh, actually, I might as well show you that right now. All right, so you undo the aux cable. All right, I haven't done this in a while and I didn't test it because this was something I didn't really think about doing. All right, so, but usually there's a, First of all, you can gap it right here if you like. My head's not in the way. All right, that's easy, that's too easy. Um, usually, just go up like that. Usually you use something to help you guide it. Hmm. Let's try it the other way. So I'm gonna drop it from up here, down. Now you can pretty much feel your fingers. And it comes out right there. All right. Usually the guide is like it goes like right here. Okay. So you can do that and then tuck it, tuck it, tuck it. It's not wrong with that. All right. But we have what we call the Nfig shifter USB and shifter aux. Let's just adjust right now and I'll show you. All right. So. Shifter USB and shifter aux. This is the shifter aux. Okay, shifter aux is designed to go over here. It has an aux port, that way you don't have to do anything. Factory. And then the shifter USB. Very important, on the aux port, don't unplug this. First of all, if you unplug, if you plug it in backwards, it won't work. And second of all, these wires are really tight in there. So if you go to unplug it, uh, you might break them or pull them out of the connector. Okay, uh, and the second thing is a shifter USB. Uh, the IPDU can take the iPhone and iPods direct. So, all right, the shifter USB goes right there. All right, so you just open it up. It's just an extension cable for the USB. Everything's nice and pretty. All right, so let me adjust the camera angle and we'll come back and show you exactly how to install it. All right, guys, now we're going to show you how to uh, run the shifter aux and shifter USB. Um, Pretty much you just gotta pry this up. This is actually a pry tool, that's what it's designed for. It's a PPT, um, there's just a light in here. It's a PPT4, all right? So what you do is just push this in here, okay? And just pry, oops, careful, that one. Okay, I wanna see where these panel tools are because I kinda of flexed a little harder than I expected. That's weird. Nah, I just I didn't expect it to flex that much. So when you pry, you might want to start at the edge and then pry up here because they're over here. Okay, now, next thing you're going to do is two T20 Torx in here. Like I said, all these screws are all the same size, so you don't have to worry. change here. I don't remember if I can get this out without disrupting this change, but we're going to see. Alright, so, now we're here. Okay, you can see that clearly. Perfect. Alright, you're just going to squeeze this over here. Yeah, nice and easy. Boom. Um, do that. Now, over here, this thing is pretty much just pushed in this way into the thing. So, I like, I just usually grab a panel tool and push from the outside. Oh, I 
hate this thing. Because it's really... It's in there tight. There it goes. Alright, so you see, all it is, is a little connector that punches in. Alright, and then over here, all you have to do is push this in, like so. And then just push it out. Alright, now once you do that, we're going to pull all of this out. Looks like someone's been in here before. This isn't supposed to come right out. This is actually, I saw it hanging. Someone's been in this car before. So pretty much what happens here, if this happens to come out, all it is is these two hooks go in like this, and then these two go in. I saw, when I was well, before when I was doing the video, I saw that this bottom piece was kind of out a little bit. Usually what happens when people work on cars, they don't know how to put them back together. Stuff, type of stuff that happens. All right, so you see, no more hang. So now that we do that, see, these three things kind of fit into a spot back there. But since the, the bottom piece was hanging a little because it wasn't inserted right, it got caught up on the way out. I just wanted to show you how easy it usually comes out. Let me go get rid of this change because it just makes my thing is heavy. <laughs> Alright guys, here we are. So all we're going to do is, I thought I got them all. Isn't it? So all we're going to do here is just pop these out. So if you look over here, you just pop them. Boom. Boom. We got two blanks. Okay. Uh, now, if you look on the website, um, the picture of this has the black cable. We're going to leave it because it looks prettier. <laughs> um, but that black cable that we used on the website, I realized, was too thin. So it wasn't carrying the proper charge for phones. Um, it's very important because um, if you don't use the proper cable, um, I would go to charge the phone. My Android, for example, I would charge my Android phone. It would say, for proper charging, use original cable. All that meant that it is that it wasn't, sorry. I just, all I did was snip the wire through here. And pop. All that meant was that since the wire wasn't thick enough, it wasn't charging at the high voltage, which means that, so, you know, all the Enfig ones use this thick, ugly cable on purpose because um, if you use the black one, uh, you get, you don't get the rapid charge. And that's silly. Let's pay all this money and not get rapid charges. Kind of silly, as Mike Tyson would say. Imagine if Mike Tyson shows up in my shop. All right, next thing is the shifter aux. All right, same thing. We're just going to run it through here. Honestly, you don't have to pull this whole thing out. You could probably just do it by lifting it up, but I figured I'd show you guys. Shifter USB, shifter aux, OEM style. Ooh, that's fancy. All right, now you're going to grab these cables. The reason we put this straight down is because if we don't put it straight down and use the curved end on that side, it will, uh, it will, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll get it's in the way of something. All right, so now we're gonna, just to show you guys, all, right, all I'm gonna do, it's so easy, my fingertips touch back here. This is a very easy install. It's a little intimidating because you think you gotta take everything apart, but when you do it, it's really not. All right, so that's all there. Um, we're gonna push pull this cable to make everything even. Now we're gonna close this up. All right, so we do reverse of what we did before. Plug in the cigarette lighter. Yeah, it might be a little too high. All right, sorry guys. This is a quickie video. I don't. Uh, it's had a long start this morning. Um, so what I'm saying is that usually I would take my time with the video, but I just don't have the time today to give. Um, so what I mean by quickie is we're not stopping and reshooting. So this goes gets pushed back into that same hole it was in. This thing is just super tight. This is honestly one of the most annoying things I come across in this entire business. 
you could tear apart whole cars, take them apart piece by piece. No problem. This little thing? It's just a, a nuisance. There it goes. Okay. So, now, this is all pushed back into where it belongs. Guide the cables here, make sure nothing hits. All right, you see that USB on the back didn't go in exactly as planned. So, I'm going to try it again. to make sure like I said those four slots in the back need to fall in their place there you go all right so I'm gonna put these two screws back in I remember I'm using a drill with a clutch and it's a very nice drill which means that it knows it the trigger sensitive so you see how I can just squeeze it a little bit and it barely moves so it kind of feels the resistance and so lets you know all right see that was a clutch stopping it way before I had to I have it on the lowest setting, but we'll put it up to like seven. And when you put it up to seven, just do it slow, it won't crack it. See? And that's not, that's a clutch stopping. That's not me stripping out the screws. All right, so we go back here. Put it on. All right, everything's back in place. So now the shifter USB has the conversion part on the end. It may not be plugged in, but it's there. All right, so this plugs into here. Okay, just push it in and give it a little push. Make sure it locks into place. Okay, so we're going to put this in here. We're going to put the aux cable in here. Okay, now um, let me go and get a little tape, and I'll show you how to wrap this up. All right, guys, now here's a couple recommendations to keep your install um, hassle-free. Oh, because, yeah, it can be annoying. Uh, first of all, you don't need it, but pops, you could tape this if you want, I guess, for double security. All right. Then over here, you definitely want to put zero pressure. All right, so make sure it's not no strain because strain will break it. And tape this. This is just so it doesn't plug while driving. And then over here, you're going to do the same thing. Also, very little strain and just tape it. That way if someone yanks on it or the car's moving around or something stupid like that, um, you don't have any problems. All right, now we're gonna pull this all the way out here. Um, if you really wanted to, you could tape this to the back of the harness. Um, I think you'll be fine without it. All right, and then the next step is tying the harness to make sure it doesn't make any noise. Um, honestly, you could tape it to this harness right here, zip tight. That'd probably be your best bet. Because that way you don't have to worry about it. It's not hard to get. Um, in the past, I've zip tied it to this harness right here from the bottom. Which isn't too hard to do, but... A little overkill. A little overkill never hit anybody. So when I say it's overkill, it's really overkill. Because I overkill everything. Alright, so we're just going to zip tie it to that harness. Make sure not to get any of the antennas in the way of the zip tie. This is just because you don't want to drive and hear the box go ding, 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 ding in the back. All right. So, it'll probably sit back there sideways behind the radio. All right, we're going to cut this the extra for neatness off. All right. Now we have this stuff. This stuff I'm just going to tuck back. I know there's enough wiring back here. I'm going to sit it on top of the wiring. I'm sitting on top of the wiring of the climate control. I know it's not going anywhere. I'm gonna get it empty. All right. Get the antennas out of the way because they will always be in the way. Put all these cables extras. Tuck them away. All right. Everything is good. Now, before you put the car back together, just gonna test it real quick. All right, put the antennas in. It 
And you're gonna put this harness back in opposite of the way you took it out. It's gonna lift open the thing, insert it, and close it. Um, make sure that little blue connector is above. I'm not really sure. Oh, the positive cut. You can, oh, the good thing about this radio is that you can always grab from behind and lift up. In this case, I saw the poly tap was hitting on the bottom. There's something here where it's locking in. All right, another thing to be careful of, you see these two things in here? Make sure they don't go under, okay? Also, as far as the radio code, this car will remember its own radio, so there's no need for a radio code. All right, so when you hit CD, it'll say CD EXT. Let me just load to show you the difference. because right, sometimes people don't get it. To access, you don't access the SAT. All right, you hit the CD, and it'll say CD. And then when you hit the CD again, it'll say CD EXE and access the external. If there's nothing hooked up, so it says CD5 Tracker 9, that means everything's working fine. Uh, check the audio on the auxiliary and check the connection on the USB. And that's it, you're good to go. Um, all right, let me put this car back together and we'll give you a quick demo on how it works. Well, anyway, it'll be a different video or maybe this video, I'm not sure yet. Uh, video is brought to you by nfitcarstereo.com. We sell and install. We also ship worldwide. If you're a shop, we also do wholesale accounts. Um, that's it, nfitcarstereo.com. Thanks for watching.